Splish splash and let's add a custom fluid to Minecraft. Alright, we find ourselves back in Telegram once more and in this tutorial we're going to be adding a custom fluid to Minecraft. Now this will involve quite a bit of copying and pasting over as sometimes happens in modding over here. However, I will try to explain each method that I copy over best of my ability. And there are also some limitations with the fluid, but hopefully those are going to be okay. So first of all, in our tutorial mode package, we're going to right click a new package called fluid. And inside of there, we need two new classes. One of them is the mod fluids class. And the other one is going to be our custom fluid. And that is going to be the soap water fluid. First of all, we want to make this an abstract class and then we want to extend the flowable fluid over here. And you can see we don't have to implement anything from the flowable fluid because this is actually an abstract class. So we should be totally fine. Now, what we do want is two static classes in here, but let's actually start at the very beginning. We want to override a few different methods. The first one is the isInfinite method. That one simply is going to return false. It should be fairly self-explanatory what this does, right? If it's infinite, then you could do a two by two with this particular fluid and it's going to become infinite. Then we might want to override the before breaking block method. Now this one is very interesting because this one is basically called when this fluid flows into a block that could be broken. So for example, a torch, right? And this governs the behavior that then happens. Now what we can do is we can just do this one right here. So this would basically just drop the block more or less. So this would be the behavior that water has. We can, by the way, also take a look at the flowable fluid, press control H, and then take a look at the water fluid, for example. And you can see it's doing exactly the same thing over here. And you can also, which is very important, see all of the different things that the water fluid basically has inside of it. So I highly recommend taking a look at both the water fluid as well as the lava fluid classes so you get a better idea of what exactly the values might be. Whatever the case may be, this is the second method. And then let's continue along. Let's get the flow speed. This is going to, this is an integer. Now this should be, if I recall correctly, this is four for the water. So we can just take another look at this flow speed right here. You can see there's a four right here. And we can even take a look at a lava and I believe lava. And you can see for lava, actually, the flow speed is dependent on whether or not it's in the nether, basically, right? So this is, would be an ultra warm dimension, then it is four. And if it's in the overworld, then it's two. So that's the general idea here. So hopefully that makes sense as well. Let's get some of the other ones in and then we'll see get level decrease per block. We also have the get level, we also have get tick rate. And then Lastly, the get blast resistance, which are all the, well, maybe the different, the integer ones or the number ones, basically. Get level decrease per block. I'm not a thousand percent sure what this is. What I, if I understand this correctly, depending on your level right here, right? So maybe you have a level 15, then this would have 15 different levels that it can take. And then per block, how many of those levels are you decreasing? So if I were to do 15 over here and I have get level 15, the block would actually only flow one level. I believe that that's how it works. I would stand corrected if someone has a better explanation for this. Let's just put in an eight here and a one over here. The tick rate, I'm just going to put at five. Once again, we can take a look at the tick rate over here as well. So the tick rate right here is 10 in the nether and 30 in the overworld, while in water, it is five. Yes, there you go, five. I'm unsure exactly what the tick rate does. However, once again, highly recommend playing around with those numbers. That is always one thing that could be a good idea. Last resistance is just going to be 100F. I think that that's going to be okay. Then we can also override the can be replaced with method, which we're just going to return false over here. So it can't be replaced with anything. There's something crazy in the lava over here can be replaced with can be replaced with there you go. So it's like, so it's about if the water is at a certain height, then it can be replaced with that. I am, I'm unsure what this really is about, but whatever the case may be, we're just going to say false and that's going to be okay. Then let's continue with the get still method over here. Now we're going to actually not return null. We're actually going to make a deliberate error over here. This is where we actually have to register something and then return it once again. So we're just going to do that instead. We're also going to have the same thing with the get flowing over here. Same thing applies, just making a deliberate error. We also are going to do the same thing with the get bucket item. Once again, a deliberate error over here. And then last but not least, we also need to do this with the to block state method. And that will also return an error. And then we should be fine with those methods. Lastly, we also want to override the is still method and we just want to return false. I believe that, that should be fine. And then we need two different static classes. So we're going to have a public static class called flowing. This is going to extend the soap water fluid. So the class we're 
actually in. It's going to be extending this. And then we're just going to copy this. And the other one is going to call, be called still. There you go. Let's then make do the following. We're going to append properties. So this is going to call the super. That's fine. And then we're going to say builder.add and then level over here. That's important. We also want to override the get level method. And this will return the state.get level. There you go. And then lastly is still here is going to be false. Well, in the still class, we're just going to override the get level over here, but we're going to return eight. So this is actually going to be the actual level of this particular fluid. And is still in this case is true because, well, this is the still fluid. So this might be a little bit complicated, right? It's like all sorts of craziness. We have like two, two static classes. Well, this is pretty much modeled after the vanilla way of doing it. You can see we have the flowing class over here. We have the still class over here. So that's pretty much all that we're doing. I highly recommend checking out both of those classes. And now we can actually go into our mod fluids class and start to well register some stuff. We're going to need four fields, public, static, flowable fluid. This is going to be the still soap water. And then let's duplicate this. And this is going to be the flowing soap water. We then need a public static block. This is going to be the soap underscore water underscore block. Let's import this, making sure that we import the correct block class from, Ni Mi from Minecraft block block, of course. And then we also need a item class. And then we also need an item that is going to be soap water bucket. Now we're going to register all of them in the mod fluids class, because if I register them in the blocks and the item class, then there are some issues with the ordering. That's why I basically want to register them all in here. So we're going to uh, have the register method and I will actually just copy over the registration. All of this is, of course, available to you in the description below. Get up a pass for an individual just as well. But this shouldn't be anything too crazy. So you can see the still soap water is just registry.register. Make sure when importing the registry class that you register the that you get the correct registry class from Minecraft Net Util Registry Registry. Make sure of that. This is going to be in the fluid registry, of course, just called soap water, and then we're making a new still soap water. But the flowing one, interestingly enough, it's called flowing soap water, and here we're just creating a new flowing soap water fluid. For the soap water block, you can see we're passing in to the new fluid block here a still soap water. So we're just adding the still soap water. It's called soap water block. And we're just copying all of the settings from the water block. Lastly, we have the soap water bucket where we also just pass in the still soap water here and making sure that we have the recipe remainder bucket and that we stack it to only one item. And that is pretty much it. Now we can go into the soap water fluid over here and return everything. So we can say mod fluids dot still soap water. For the flowing, we can say mod fluids. We can say mod fluids dot flowing soap water. For the bucket, we can also say mod fluids dot soap water bucket and then last but not least here we actually want to do something a little bit different and that's going to be the mod fluids dot soap water block dot get default state with the properties dot level 15 this would be the in property and then we'll just say get get block state level over here and then passing it and then passing in the state and that should be pretty much all that we need to do in this case lastly of course let's all mod fluids dot register over here and that is almost everything done there's one last thing that we want to do and that is register the actual textures for the fluids and then also of course we need to add the translation as well as the model and the texture for the bucket but let's first of all go into our tutorial mod client over here and what we're going to have once again i will actually copy this over as well it won't be too complicated you can see we have a fluid render handler registry over here Calling the instance and then registering both the still fluid as well as the flowing fluid with a simple render handler and we're just using the water textures over here as you can see now i've already created here a tint the tint works the following way the first two numbers are actually the alpha value so how transparent this is and then the rest is just rgb so that's the idea so this is a rgb so you can just use a color picker to change your color over here. And then it's very important that we also add the translucent render layer for both the still as well as the flowing fluid so that it actually becomes transparent, right? It shouldn't be anything crazy. Changing this to your own custom texture, if you have one, it should be fairly self-explanatory that you just have to change this to your own textures uh, identifier here. Shouldn't be anything crazy, right? Let's add the translation. This is going to be the soap water bucket over here, of course, and then also the soap water bucket JSON file over here. Nothing too crazy, just points to a normal item texture, and the normal item texture is also right here. So once again, nothing too crazy over here, something that we've seen plenty of times before. 
Right, and that should be all of the things that we need to do. So let's go into the game and see if it flows. All right, we found ourselves back in Minecraft and there we go. The soapy water bucket or the soap water bucket has been added. So let's also see if I can right click and indeed I can. Now this is, <laughs> well, if that's not a crazy behavior, I don't know what is, but that that's actually hilarious. I don't know what the frick is going on right here, but that is really, really cool. Okay, so let's go back and uh, let's see what uh, why this would be the case. Right, I believe the issue being that the level over here is actually 8. This has to be 0, while the level in the actual flowing fluid here, right, this is where it gets its level. So this this should be have level 0, I believe, something like that. And this is where the actual level should be set. So this one has to be 0. I believe this should fix it. Let's hope, because that one was absolutely crazy. And then you also saw that it didn't have any physics associated with it. So if you want physics, then you can add it to the to a fluid tag in your data Minecraft tags folder. Now, this is semi optional in that if you plan your fluid to be used in some sort of machine and stuff like that, and maybe some other mods add machines as well that use water, then it might be the case that they're using the water tag which in turn means that your fluid will be handled the same as water, which might not be something that you want. So there pretty much is a trade-off between having in-world physics versus it not being treated as water in some sort of a machine, basically. But if you do want it, then you can go to the tags folder, right-click directory called fluids. And then inside of there, I'm just going to copy it over. It's just called water.json. And you can see I've just added both of the fluids over here. Once again, this is semi-optional only if you really want it to behave exactly like water. If that's not important to you, then you can leave this out. And if it's more important to you that it basically is not treated as water by other mods, uh, just keep that in mind as well. All right, it actually is the case that the get level might not be the issue. The issue is that I forgot one method to overwrite, and that is the matches type method over here. Well, it can happen even to me. So you can see, there you go. But if we do this, now I am incredibly confident that it's finally going to work. So let's see. All right, find ourselves in Minecraft. And now let's see. And there we go. Looks much better than before. I mean, what with that craziness before, that was actually insane. But we can see, you know, that it's basically flowing over and it even flows into there. That's really cool. And that's just like, as you can see, so it, it pretty much behaves like water. I believe if I go in there, there you go. Let's just get a bucket. If I'm in survival mode, I can pick it up. You can see it turns into a soap bucket and it also places down. So pretty much exactly what you expect it to. And I believe that if we actually try to get this to, well, be infinite, it probably won't work because we've set it to infinite fault. And you can see it is not infinite exactly what we want it to. So that's pretty awesome. And that's how easy it can be to add a custom fluid to Minecraft. And as always, of course, all of the code is in the description below. Get up a pastor and individual just as well. But that will be it for this tutorial right here. Hope you found this useful and you learned something new. And I'll see you all in the next tutorial. Oh, yeah.